Hello, James Sharman here alongside Craig Forrest. And yes, the knockout rounds have begun at Russia 2018. Two tense, compelling games today. France up against Argentina and Uruguay against Portugal, the European champions. Let's begin, though, in Kazan. France, Argentina, 11th minute. Look at the pace from the kid, 19-year-old Kylian Mbappe, forcing the foul from Marcos Rojo. Up steps Antoine Griezmann. 1-0 France. The French had never lost a match when Griezmann scores. 41st minute though. Have a look at Angel Di Maria. About 30 yards out, onto his left. Boom, Craig, what a finish. It was a great finish. It was a first shot on target by Argentina as well, just before the halftime. A game where France really did dominate the early stages, but it's game on at 1-1 at half. Early second half though, Leo Messi. Inside the area, onto his left foot, sends it towards goal. It goes off Gabriel Mercado, and it's 2-1. Argentina in control. But Lucas Hernandez sends it across for Benjamin Pavard. And look at that one, Craig. Technique, everything is 2-2. Yeah, he'll remember this for the rest of his life. That was as well struck a ball as you possibly could get, and it was well-deserved, 2-2. Now, I mentioned Mbappe, right? What a game the 19-year-old kid had. He scores again, 3-2 France. Then, 68th minute, it's going to be Giroud to Mbappe once again. This kid is something special. What a great passing play that was. That made it 4-2. Make that 4-3 at the death. Kun Aguero off the bench scores. It wouldn't be enough, though. Leo Messi is on his way home. 4-3, the final France progressor. Uh, just a classic match. Um, back and forth. Mm -hmm. Great goals, great drama, and in killing Mbappe, the star was born maybe a year ago, I think, in fairness, in the yes. Champions League. But boy, what a coming out party on the world stage. Yeah, exactly. On the world stage, he became a household name. I mean, we knew him in the football world for sure. But now in the international stage, this was a great performance from the French team, I thought. It was a step up from grade from what they played before. Griezmann was better. Giroud was better. Mbappe was better. Pogba was better. It was a great cohesive uh, unit. Uh, and the lead changes really certainly surprised. French took the lead. Then Argentina surprised, really, and uh, were not going to go away. They worked really really hard and although the French really closed down Messi it was other players that came forward and really made a match of it and uh, it just didn't know which way it was going to go in the end but the French deserved it I thought. We saw the midfield with Kante and Popper once again looking really good but also Anton Griezmann it was a penalty but he was involved and, and so far in this mm -hmm. tournament he hasn't really been as involved uh, as we've seen in the past so more good signs for yeah, France. Yeah you know and he's very critical about himself and he was in the pre in the group of stage as well that he needed to be better and focused and he's confident in, uh, at what he does and certainly it shows today and the whole team it was a lift uh, from everybody and the French must be thinking very confidently going into the quarterfinals now that they can go all the way like just about anybody else in this tournament it's wide open and of course Messi maybe probably his final World Cup he's not going to win one of these things he goes home uh, too early in his mind but let's be honest not a great great team does it affect the legacy at all in your opinion no not in my opinion because he's just you know you look at his whole body of work that he's done over his whole career and what he's done internationally and at club level as well the Champions League and the La Liga and what he's done at that top because that is the top echelon for professional football this may be the biggest stage of the World Cup but the Champions League top end is as good as it's got to be and it's tough to be the player that plays at that level consistently and he's done it for years and years a little bit sorry for him but that's tournament football well, whom will France play? The winner of this one from Sochi, Uruguay, and the European champions, Portugal. There he is, CR7. His team is unbeaten in 31 competitive games when he plays. Well, Uruguay yet to allow a goal at this year's World Cup. Seven minute, Edison Cavani sends it across for Luis Suarez. Look at the ball back in from Suarez to Cavani off his head, off his face. It's a great goal in the end. It is 1 0. It's a great ball. You know, cross to Cavani and then Suarez's ball with incredible pace. And look at uh, Thunder Thighs here, Ronaldo with an opportunity that he smashes against the ball. We had to show you that. We're not sure quite what he was doing with the shorts. He's got great quads. Let's leave it at that, shall we? <laughs> yes. I've got much to, to aim for at the gym this week, apparently. <laughs> All right, second half now. Ronaldo getting his team up for the second half. 55th, the ball comes in for 35 year old Pepe. Oh boy, we've tied up 1-1. One, one. However, Uruguay will answer back. Four on three for a moment here. Cavani! Brilliant! That is pure gold! That is simply stunning. Wow, Cavani's second of the game. He would leave the game injured in the second half as well. But there's your final Uruguay progress. Ronaldo is sent back home, as is Portugal. Again, a pretty impressive display by the Uruguayans, mm -hmm. both going forward 
and at the back once again. Yes, uh, really tight defensively. It was exactly what we thought the game would be like. Uh, the early goal certainly made it a little bit more exciting, but you know, a very good, strong defensive side, Uruguay, with two very good front players with the Cavani and uh, Suarez, who were excellent on the day as well. They work really, really well. The injury to Cavani is a little bit of a problem for them. Everybody will be looking at that, whether he'll be fit for the quarterfinals or not. But a tra terrific two goals from him as well, and from Uruguay, and for Portugal, and Ronaldo, a disappointing, of course. They, they almost got Portugal really because they, they did that to a lot of teams during Euro two years ago where they defended when they had the lead like that in Uruguay uh, excellent side and they again got to be a side that are pretty confident the way things are going and they look pretty solid and if you can defend that well with those two guys up front you're always going to have a chance and Messi and Ronaldo now going home out of the World Cup a bit of a shame of course yeah but from Ronaldo's perspective he scored the goals in the group phase actually had a pretty good World Cup but yeah. we're seeing how he's dealt with today he's not the player he used to be albeit still very effective yeah, very effective I think it's difficult when you're in, up against a side like Uruguay that closed him out he didn't influence the game as much and really when you look at a day where it's so historic when you got a guy like Messi and Ronaldo going out of the tournament on the same day and then you look at the World Cup in a whole and think well, how good it's actually been that there's enough star power left in this competition for it to be exciting that nobody's really worried about the two star players, if you like, leaving the tournament at this point. It's been terrific. You know, no one's saying right now, man, we miss Italy and we miss the Dutch and we miss Chile. No one's saying that because no. it's been a great World Cup so far. Yeah. July 6th in Nizhny will be Uruguay against France in the quarterfinals.